Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is John and today is a really special episode because I finally hit 100 subscribers. Hopefully we can move on to 1,000 now. As a way of saying thanks, I have been writing a ton of music on the piano. It's not studio quality, but I'm gonna post it up anyways. I have its own playlist within this channel, so check that out if you are interested in piano music. Thank you for supporting the channel so far. Today, I just wanna show you an update on how things are going. I've been working away on the frame and kind of a little bit everywhere, so let's take a look. I hope you enjoy. In the previous episode, we kind of tore apart the whole front end and now we're kind of getting into the nitty gritty actually repairing the frame. My goal by the end of this episode is to have the frame completely fixed from about here, maybe a little bit farther back, all the way to the front where the horns go, where the bumper uh, mounts to. What that means is all the crappy metal cut out, all the new metal welded in, then everything POR15 covered so it won't rust as easily in the future. So here's the front of the frame. A world's difference from how it looked before. If you haven't seen it, here's the cutaway that I did from the frame. And that's gonna be pretty much how this side is gonna be done. I had to do a ton of work to this front part over here, but it's all done, even the bottom side, ready to go. I think I kind of picked the most complicated part of the frame to start off with. So I got the two front leaf springs installed temporarily, but all the bolts are lining up. I also was able to get the front bumper on and get all of that figured out as well. Now I'm working on the next part, which is where those shock mounts bolt up to. And then on the bottom part of this frame is where the sway bar bracket would normally go. So here's another look at where that shock mount would go. And then if we just look right here, that part is where that sway bar would mount up to the frame. So on the other side, it's completely gone. And I know what you're thinking, like this frame is really awful. Every six inches, there's a giant hole in it. Right now, yeah, that is true. But after this hole, there's a good part of the frame that goes probably all the way back to like about this part. And then on this side, it actually goes all the way to there and then there's a hole. And on the other side, the hole is like right there. But once all that is done and the frame is pretty much in good shape again. Now, because the new suspension I'm putting on is a four inch lift, that means that my sway bar linkage is gonna be too short. So I'm cutting them. I'm gonna sleeve them with a metal tube and I'm gonna make sway bar disconnects Hopefully that's not too expensive, but that way I have options down the road. Yeah, I'm basically refabricating the entire sway bar system, trying to keep as much of the old stuff as I can, but making sure that it is strong enough. So as much as I wanna start working on that next foot of the frame, where those mounts go, I ran out of metal for the frame. So I have a new sheet of that coming in. I'm gonna turn my energy to the aqua pump. I'm tearing apart the whole front end of the engine getting it ready for that water pump to go in. The water pump is kind of like the heart of the cooling system. Without that, you can have a new radiator, new fans, new everything, and it won't matter if your pump's not working. Now is the perfect time to swap that out. So I know from the very heart of my cooling system to all the other components, everything's gonna be new and it's gonna work great. Another thing I'm gonna do today is loosening all of these and getting all the hoses ready for all the new stuff that's gonna come in. Okay, so the first step to taking this water pump off starts with this fan, and it also starts with these belts right behind the fan. So the neat thing about older vehicles is they used multiple serpentine belts to run all the accessories. So one could go to your AC, or one could go to your alternator, or one could go for the power steering. Newer vehicles have one larger belt that more often than not just covers everything. In order to replace the water pump, first I gotta remove all those belts. Now it's actually pretty easy to remove them. Belts are serviceable and they don't last forever. Engineers designed this whole front end where all you have to do is move a couple bolts and they just come right out. So the first one is gonna be right here. Once I loosen this, this whole piece can swing back and forth, tightening and loosening the belt. For the second belt, we have to look all the way over here to where 
the alternator is. So you could tell right away that all of this stuff on the cover was one of the old belts. However, the same principles with that power steering apply down here. So right now there's this bolt and all I need to do is just loosen it. And you can even see the track as you go back and forth, you loosen and you tighten the belt. Let's start with the water pump. So I'm using a 15 millimeter wrench. All it requires is just a decent little turn. There's actually a second one that holds it in place as well. Now it's loose. We can just take this whole reservoir and just push it out of the way. Pretty loose, ready to come off. Okay, so this side is the same thing, but now we're just using a 13, 13. There we go. Okay, so now with both those belts out of the way, we can focus on this fan. There's just four bolts. It takes a 13 and this whole front fan section should be able to come off. Okay, so when you go to remove these bolts, you can find a little tricky. There's a couple solutions. You can get a thin rod like this and you just weasel this rod in between two of those bolts like that. And this will give you leverage for when you need to um, undo that last bolt. Okay, and with those four bolts removed, this should just pop out. That pulley should also be able to pop out, which it does. Okay, so now we can get a really good look at the water pump itself. We gotta take some hoses off. There's three, one here, here, and then another one kind of hidden behind this bracket. So we'll probably have to take this bracket off in order to take this hose off. And then once that is done, all we need to do is just go around and undo all of the bolts that bolted to the front of the block. We got the old water pump out, ready to put the new one in. But before we do, there's one last step that we need to do, and here it is. I've already done this for the other three. I'm gonna show you the last one, which is right here. So all of these bolts have threads that can reverse out, and they need to be taken off the old one and put on the new one. We can clean up that gasket that would normally uh, go on the block, and then we can put that water pump back in. Now, my engine's hella dirty, so I'm gonna be cleaning it before I put my nice new shiny water pump on. All right, guys, so since I have the front of the engine all apart, it's kind of the ideal time to touch upon a lot of little things like that water pump, the AC compressor, the alternator. Um, there's a pulley that goes under the harmonic balancer that I'm also touching up, the fan for the water pump, ton of stuff. In addition to that, my AC hose, I don't know, maybe the zip tie that holds it to the side broke. This definitely tapped the exhaust. When I took it out, it's exactly where the exhaust is. This would also be a great time to replace it. I got a new to me hose that I am currently putting in. I took out the whole section inside the cab. I got my new hose kind of uh, finding its way to its new home. If you also need to replace this, you're gonna need a 22 wrench on here, which is the hose side. The thing you wanna be careful with is this pipe right here, if you don't hold this nut down with something, then you're just gonna twist this pipe and it's gonna break. Make sure you use two wrenches, one here, and then one on the other side like that. With that being said, this is almost done, ready to go back in. Here's how the water pump assembly is looking. So out of all of them, six of them broke off and I've just slowly been screwing them out and then retapping those threads. It was like super frustrating when you break one bolt. So when you break six bolts, it's like, it's not good. But I have some drill bits and things like that coming in so I can drill those out and rethread them. All the drill bits I had got broken from before and I forgot to replace them. So now I ordered a new set. Okay, so one of the big things about working on a car is waiting for parts, bolts, and all the little things that you kind of need to make things work, as well as tools. So that has been my main hurdle that I've been trying to get over. As a result, I've kind of been working on a little bit of everything. Okay, so those drill bits came in and I started to work on all those broken bolts that were on the timing chain cover and the worst possible thing happened. Unfortunately, I cracked the housing for my timing chain cover. That was at the end of working that day. So I wanted to point out is I kind of already addressed the water pump and that whole issue, but I never really talked about the oil pump or the fuel pump. I'm gonna be keeping the mechanical fuel pump on this. I'm not gonna go electric. It's very easy to start upgrading everything. Like I am gonna try and get a HEI or HIE or whatever distributor 
so I can get rid of the point system to make it a little bit more reliable. Anyways, I'm also gonna be upgrading to a new fuel pump. I'm gonna be keeping the oil pump just how it is. I decided that this was gonna be an opportune time to work on those wheel well inserts. The passenger side one, I could have fixed it. It just wasn't worth the time or effort. So I put that on my parts list. Same with the battery tray. Those two parts kind of go together. I ended up going, I got a new to me timing chain cover. I got a wheel well insert for the passenger side, a battery tray cover. Uh, I got a whole, I got a whole fender. And um, the whole reason behind that is I kind of had to wait for a bunch of stuff to come in. So I started looking at what I had uh, a little bit closer and I had about an inch of Bondo holding my fenders together, which isn't ideal. It makes me think maybe this thing was in an accident that was not reported or something. Either way, I started getting parts. Fenders are really hard to come by. I still need one for the driver's side, so hopefully I can find one of those. But in the meanwhile, my sheet of metal for the frame came in. So I worked away really hard on the entire frame. Forgot to record any of it, but that's okay. I'm gonna show you what I've done right now. And uh, yeah, it's a bit different from when you last saw it. So the first thing we'll probably notice is, yeah, the axle is back in. A big part of the suspension and lift kit's already on. My uh, shocks are on. I fixed the both sides of the frame where the shock towers bolt onto. Here's a, a closer look at the actual frame and how I just kind of bolted that back in. This part here is all new metal, very strong. I haven't fixed the bottom part of the frame yet. I wanted to get my sway bar lined up. At the time, I thought that is where the mounts go for the sway bar, but it's where the bump stops go. Here's a closer look at my sway bar quick disconnect links. I am gonna try and get new bushings for them because they are a bit wallered out, but they turned out great. I spent, I think, $50. I have my front axle. I wanna clean it up a bit, put new brakes on it, switch out the diff fluid. I gotta take off that pitman arm and put the drop down pitman arm in. My steering stabilizer, which is that right there, needs to come out and the new one needs to go in as well. I got my drop down pitman arm installed. I had to get a new joint because when I cut the old one off, I ended up slightly damaging um, the joint that it goes into. So I figured I'd add that to the parts list uh, when I went to go get stuff. Now to clean everything up, including the front axle, because there's a lot of surface rust built up, I went through about four of these pads and that included the front axle, the front grill support, this fender, which is for the driver's side, then parts of the frame that I cleaned up as well. The new wheel well insert that the battery goes onto, it looks a bit rough, but the metal is like pristine. So all I have to do is just clean that up a little bit. Here's the battery tray that I was able to get as well. I'm gonna just cut a little piece of metal that will work to hold it down. And here's my new timing chain cover. Now, these can get pretty expensive to buy them new. The cheaper ones that are new, there was a lot of issues I found with the distributor lining up correctly. So I made sure I didn't get one of those. And then to get one that had good reviews that, hey, it actually fits properly, they're like 600 bucks. Whenever I can, I try to get used OEM parts because you know they're gonna fit. And as long as you kind of do your homework and you know what to look out for, you can make sure the part is good. And it's also a lot cheaper, which is when you need a lot of parts, it's, it's the way to go. Now here's my track bar. The only reason it's not installed is because I had a bushing that was just very bad. When I went to go get a bunch of parts, I also brought this because they had a press. I was able to press out that bad bushing. I have a new one coming in as well. So once that comes in, it can go on. I can clean this up and it can be installed. For the front end, there's a couple things I still need to do. I have my drop down brake lines that need to go in. This track bar is the second thing. And then the third major thing is getting the brackets on the frame for the sway bar. So my goal at the beginning of the video was to get the frame done from the bumper to where I said, like where the leaf spring goes into the frame. I'm gonna switch that goal. I got more accomplished. I still have to POR 15 the frame. It makes most sense to do that once I have the brackets welded in place for the sway bar. I've also spent a lot of time 
physically cleaning a lot of things. And the reason for that is I'm not planning on selling this Jeep. I'm planning on keeping it and working on it in the future. And the worst thing about working on a Jeep is when you get like dirt in your eye or something like under your fingernail. And when it is clean and you can work on it and your hands don't instantly get filthy, it is one gonna be more welcoming to work on it and you're gonna enjoy the work more and it just looks better at the end, so. Now on camera, it might look like the paint matches, but in person it is very different. The paint on the car is a custom color without a paint code. The paint that I'm painting everything does have a paint code, which is right here. It's the metallic red from a CJ7, I believe. It is a Jeep color. It's a little bit different than an OEM Grand Wagoneer color. It's gonna make it unique. Also, if there's ever any damage in the future, heaven forbid, it won't be a pain in the butt trying to fix it because it can actually match the paint. So here's just a little extra bit of goodies that I wanted to show you. I got four wheel caps and then two turn signals. I know, they look great. The trick to it is this. Goo gone. I found it worked best with a sponge that had a soft side and then a rough side. Doing little circular motions turned out really well. Then I did a, a two-step polish process. So this was the first one. And the second one is right here. Yeah, so that's it for this video. Thank you for tuning in. In the next episode, what we're looking at is getting those wheel wells on, the fenders on, the front on, the grill on, hopefully the hood back on. And then that way the whole front third of the whole Jeep has been done all the way down to the frame. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I really hope you enjoy watching the videos. I'd love to get your feedback on how it can make them better. Or if you found anything useful, please let me know. I'd love to hear that stuff. That way I can make sure I uh, do it again in the future with other things. Subscribe. Help me get to a thousand. It would mean a lot. It meant so much just getting to 100, like I'm still happy thinking about it. I'm really looking forward to sharing this journey of working on this Jeep and that Jeep. And that's a Corvette under there. You'll never know unless you subscribe. Bye for now.